boy, he is. Did you hear about what they're message. doing in Palm Beach County in Florida? You hear they're having kids, uh, young, like 19, 20-year-old cops, and they're putting them in high school? What? And they're busting kids oh, for yeah. selling weed? Have you heard about this? Yeah, we, we talked we about talked, it We talked about it. Rogan. Yeah, we you talked have, about it before three, we left. You have three children. What do you want to do? You, you mad at that? Yeah, yeah, I am mad at that. I, I, we, we, it's high school, and they're smoking weed. That's all you're arresting him for? Look, if you're arresting him for no, undercover, no, 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 uh, you know, no, murder for hire plots, and you know they're planning on knocking over banks and shit when they get out I'm of high not, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, bust him for okay, that. I understand. They're, it's just pot. No, That's all I they understand. did. They went in, and this chick pretended to be a fucking high school student. Hey, you guys want to buy pot? And they're like, Yeah. Well, you got some. <laughs> the next thing you know, they're in jail. That, I mean, the, the whole thing's ridiculous. Right. No, no, that's not Our right. tax Sorry. dollars went for a woman to pretend that she was in high school so she could find out who's got the weed. You know, right, you, you, you have, have, you have, what the fuck? You have children now, so you understand that when you've said it, I've heard it come out of your mouth. You know that that's West Palm and that Miami, that area is a cesspool of oh, that's, drugs. <clears throat> that area We've is all, terrible. Let's be honest. But the problem with that area is pills. Well, wow, that even makes it worse in my fucking eyes. <clears throat> the, the problem is pills, and pills are everywhere. We talked about it on the podcast before, but if you haven't seen it, it's available online. You need to watch an episode of Vanguard called the OxyContin Express. And they go into uh, Vanguard is this net. It's one of those shows on one of those weird networks. Where you're not exactly sure what it is, like True TV or some shit like that. But <clears throat> if you can find it on your DVR, it's the shit because they they go on these like investigative journalistic adventures and undercover a lot of shit. And one of the things they did is they uncovered the whole situation down in Florida. It's called the OxyContin Express, and it shows how they have these pain management centers in Florida. And Florida doesn't have a database. So if you got a prescription for OxyContin, which you could easily down there, you say, oh, my back's fucked up. They look at you, they go, well, the guy's a little overweight. Maybe he's got a back problem. Here you go. They write you a prescription there in the office, and you go right next door in the same fucking building, and they've got the OxyContin. And they sell it to you. It's like they're legal heroin dealers, and they have no database. So if you went to Dr. Joey Diaz and got your prescription... You could get out of the car, drive right down the street, and go to Dr. Joe Rogan. And Dr. Joe Rogan writes a prescription for you, too. And then you go down the street, another fucking 20 miles down the road, and get another prescription. And you can do it over and over again because they can't compare. So you can just show up at these pain management centers and get 30, 40 fucking pills. And these people are they're called the OxyContin Express because people are driving down from Kentucky and Ohio. They're driving down this highway to access the, uh, the Florida fucking OxyContin. They're hanging out, phoning this place. I mean, it is a... A trip, man. They they show the inside of this building. There's all these people jonesing and walking back and forth like zombies, and they're sitting there smoking cigarettes, sitting in front of the place waiting for it to yeah. open. It's fucking nuts, man. They're waiting to get in and get their shit, and they it's have amazing, all these undercover bro. comics, uh, uh, undercover cameras, and they're in, in, you know interviewing all these people. It's like, where are you coming from? Well, I'm coming from Kentucky. I make this trip once a month. You know, I need my stuff. I'll tell you what, you can't get can't get it in Kentucky. They have, they're busting people left and right. Is it on Netflix? Is that, uh, is this... I don't know if it's on Netflix. I know I, I, I watched it online, and then I found the uh, yeah. the show on TV. I didn't well, even know about the show well, until Netflix, somebody it's on Twitter Sunset did. Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Everybody's hooked well, on the, those the fucking documentary. Oxycontin. No, on the yeah. documentary. Story. Everybody, look, you, you, you I mean, <laughs> the, that you can get Oxycontins. <laughs> I know a dude who had a problem, and he had a problem because he got a prescription for it when he lived in Texas, and then he moved to California. He got another prescription for it here, mm -hmm. and he decided to just have himself a little little fucking party and so when he did that he got jacked look at what, his what cookie he got there that, what the fuck like, is that fuck, oh my God. That, that looks like kermit this the frog is, please, that, please. This is the, this is the body of christ compels you i i overdosed the other day joe yeah i heard what uh, happened um, you gonna eat that whole thing oh you're a fuck you no get fuck that it get that away yeah, fuck well, that. i'm scared i'm scared of that cookie so i i, I had mushrooms in solvang i don't even remember it. it wasn't that big of a trip so i've been kind of joined in solvang it, people should know it's oh, a town so Sol you went yeah. up there it's like wine country yeah you go with your girl have a nice time pop right. a few mushrooms right and it, it it wasn't as good as i wanted so i've been kind of jonesing to do it again so me and my girlfriend were like hey I, let's what is do you, are you measuring your dose or are you just like looking at it um, I usually buy like a quarter or an eighth and usually take half of that. An eighth of an quarter. ounce? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. What, is a, what is an ounce? 16 grams? Show the picture of the fucking one. What is an ounce? I saw it. They're beautiful. Uh, yeah. What is an ounce? 16 grams? I don't know. I don't go by ounces at all. I always just went by quarters and an eighth. But I mean, just so we can... 28 grams. 28. Is it 28 grams? Well, yeah. You're okay. Eating how many? A uh, quarter. Half a quarter. Half a quarter. So a quarter is seven fucking grams and you're eating an eighth. 
Okay. So you well, I, 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 ate, I ate a full quarter, if not more, this yeah, time you're around. Fucking crazy. And oh, it, so you went over five grams? Yeah, he's probably. fucking crazy. Uh, oh, no, I went over probably eight a quarter, so it's okay, seven grams, seven grams oh, so, or more. Oh, so you crossed over to the dark side? Yeah. It was the, what happened is is the the mushrooms I got. I don't know if I saw the, you saw the picture. Uh, one of the caps I had was about the size of a a, a, t- a baseball, maybe. It's and huge. It was huge, and uh, the stem was about that big, which was about the size of I don't know. And and thick. It was like a, a huge chunky fat. I've never seen mushrooms that. I thought they weren't real. Like I thought they they were like they picked the wrong kind and it wasn't going to work because they were so big and there was no way to really judge it. So I was so just you like, eat fucking half of it. You luck. I, I, I was. It was the dumbest the thing ever. Thing? I was just. I was. I was like, you know what? I want to see a lot of crazy shit. I'm gonna go deep this time. Wow. And so uh, I made tea. My girlfriend made tea. Uh, with the I, mushrooms in it. With the mushrooms, we All both right, made our, we both made our own separate teas. So we both had about a quarter each in each one of our teas, and she only drank half of it because she started feeling it halfway through the tea, drinking the tea. Jesus. Yeah. So she didn't eat. I did it quick, and I just ate it and drank the whole thing real quick. And then we're both laying on the couch, and my body starts twitching. Like immediately, I had all these twitches over my body, like it was twitching. And uh, the only thing I rumblings of the universe coming. Yeah. The only thing I had ate today, because that's another thing in soul family, we had eight before. So uh-huh. the only thing I ate today, to the, that day was a beet salad. That's how you're supposed to do it. Right. You're supposed to fast for yeah. like 12 hours. So I had a small beet salad, like oh seriously God. small beet salad. Oh, my God. So I'm laying on the couch, and suddenly uh, I looked at my hand, and it turned into triangles, uh, pyramids. Like I couldn't see my fingers. There were just tons of little pyramids. And then I looked to the just ground. Just like little geometric patterns. Yeah. And I've always had in, in the past, whenever I was shrooming, I knew where I was. I looked around. I saw the room. I knew it was my room, but it just looked trippy. This was like, no, I was not seeing anything that looked familiar. It was like pyramids and gears and 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 uh, a lot of clock tower type things, like inside a clock where it has all these gears and stuff. Mechanisms, like you seeing the inner right. workings of the universe. Right. And so me and girlfriend both fucked up as hell. We were like, you know, let's go upstairs and lay in your bed and just chill out and look at things. How'd you get upstairs? Uh, I, I fell to the ground four times while walking up to the stairs. My feet would not work anymore. Whoa. My legs just would not work. Yeah, you're supposed to be lying down. Yeah. So I laid down and it started smelling like dog pee where I was laying. So I was trying to crawl. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to crawl, so I, I somehow got in bed, and I'm looking at what was a ceiling fan, but to me it was just a spinning vi- like like black hole, like fucking of colors, and I did I thought I was dead. I was like I am dead, and then uh, I just started getting really sick, my, like 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 uh, poisoned sick, and so then I was like holy shit, I got to puke. No, I'm not going to puke. I tried not to make myself puke. Finally, I get up. Ran to the bathroom, so I fell on the ground too. I ran to the bathroom, puked. My puke turned into what was beets, turned into this red furry uh, tree that came out and was just shooting lasers and stuff. And so I started recording myself, trying to find my phone, and I, I couldn't even use my phone. So like, it took me maybe a half hour to find out how to use my phone because the phone was just a big kaleidoscope of shit, you know? And then suddenly it all stopped. And I was like, what the fuck was that? I feel normal. I don't see anything and everything. And suddenly it, it just immediately went right back into the world and it was wow. it was i swear to god i thought i had a poison i thought i had died i had no idea what was going on my girlfriend was uh laying in bed f- just seeing all the same shit not feeling like she was dying cause she only had half of what i had she wasn't puking or anything but i was i couldn't stop puking it was just i had nothing in me i don't even know what i was puking and i thought i i fucking died you know it's fascinating when you talk about the big ones because i've never had big ones i've only had like little ones yeah but, me too but dennis and terrence mckenna when they were in um, the Amazon in like the 1970s. This is when they started having their uh, psychedelic adventures and they would go take the ayahuasca and eat the mushrooms. They said the mushrooms are like dinner plates. Like in the Amazon, these motherfuckers grow and they're like, you know, if you grow in a, a real fertile environment like that, that's one of the reasons why. Look at the size of that. Holy shit. Brian's holding one up, a picture of one. They, dude, that looks like a spaceship. And then, yeah, look inside of it. <clears throat> I zoomed in on it and that oh looks like God. a fucking, like, I don't know, like a a whale or sperm or an eyeball it only makes sense that those big ones would be even stronger like what if they're stronger per ounce as well you know but then what i was going to say is dennis dennis mckenna went crazy for like two weeks he had some sort of a schizophrenic episode from from the mushrooms and and lost his marbles and was like gone for two weeks they don't know what happened or what they don't know exactly what i mean he eventually came back 
but he was apparently just gone for like the longest time. That's some scary shit, dude. That was scary. It was four hours of being inside of a salvia or a DMT trip and not a bathroom, which I thought where I was at. And my uh, girlfriend said she would walk in and I would be sitting like Buddha, like like legs crossed, facing the wall, like two inches from a wall, just staring at it with my eyes open. And that I would look at her and my eyes would be cross-eyed. And then like I would turn back towards the wall. And she says, she's like, I didn't know what you, she's like, I thought you were mad. She's like, you were just sitting there facing a wall or something. I have no idea what the fuck that was about, but well, you wouldn't. You had a, what's called a breakthrough experience. You have what all those psychedelic freaks all really want to see. You know, a lot of people will talk awful. about they like to do mushrooms, but they never really have done mushrooms. <clears throat> you don't really do mushrooms until you see that what you saw. What you did is have the full blown experience, and that's one of the reasons why <clears throat> people talk about like. Why do you make such a big deal? They'll say to me, like, why do you make such a big deal about mushrooms? Why do you make a big deal about DMT or the psychedelic experience? Why do, why do you make such a big deal out of it? It's so infantile. Well, I make a big deal about it because to me it is a big deal. I, what I've experienced, especially DMT, it's like it's impossible. It is impossible, and it's impossibly beautiful, and it's impossibly wise. And after it's over, I feel like I'm a better person. I feel like I learned something, and I come back better and nicer and improved and more enlightened. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It sounds ridiculous hearing my own voice. But goddamn, that shit is important. You know, and what you did, you know, you didn't know exactly how much to take. And what if there was a shaman? What if there was a center where you could go to? And there's some fucking, you know, place in Malibu. And there's some fucking people that have been doing it forever. And Joey Diaz greets you at the door. Come on in, cocksucker. We got a room for you. He's got his robe on and he takes you to the place and everybody does it correctly. You know, what a beautiful world we could live in, man. So I'll tell you what, dog. I, I, I started fucking with that shit when I was younger. And I was from the East Coast. There was no fucking mushrooms. But I had these scientist kids that were like 30 when I was like 15. And they, they were scientists at East Stroudsburg. And every week they were into all this psychedelic and uh, Sid Barrett and all this shit. And they would make stuff. And I got to be honest with you, when I first started fucking around with acid, to me it was just another way of getting fucked up, killing the pain. Right, right, right. Because I started doing acid before my mom died. And I started tripping. Up. Like I remember tripping to... Well, what people don't know is you found your mom dead. Well, I was dead. On while acid, you were on acid. And I was on the way down, but... What's really fucked up wow. was that. That, wow. that was just amazing. But, you know, I started doing acid for the same reasons everybody else. I didn't even learn about hallucinogenics and the alt button until years later. Like when I did window pane in the eighth grade and I went to see uh, the Stones, I was mind boggled. What I do you mean by the alt button? You know, you made a very, you made one of the best ever uh, uh, correlations. He said that doing DMT is like pressing the alt and delete. Right? Oh, alt. Control alt delete. And, and oh, okay. Control alt delete. It's and like rebooting. It's like rebooting the your world. Brain. And I remember being a kid and not just doing it to be high. And then after my mother died, and you know the years went by, and even six months, I started selling micro dot acid. And every week I'd pick up a different 500 hits of something, uh, four-way acid, I'd pick up. And these guys were great. That's what they did. They tripped, they tripped the right way. They would, right. they would take sheets for a weekend and go camping. And, th you know, I would be petrified of staying out in the fucking wilderness <laughs> for three days. That was, they listened to Led Zeppelin. And, I mean, it was crazy. But that Cook wasn't eggs me. on a campfire yeah, and shit. Yeah, they would fucking cook and trip. That wasn't me. Like, they had uh, 100 hits one time. Four of them took in in four days on a camping trip and they had the pictures and it was just great but it wasn't for me i wasn't ready but then after my mom died i'd go into these uh psychosis like i couldn't figure out why an uncle wouldn't talk to me or something and that night on the way home i knew that my uncle and me were always at war when i was a kid i'm just making an example there was just a problem maybe a girl didn't like me or you know what, what killed my mother i always had a dilemma in my head when you're when you're 16 you always want to know answers and i remember that i would take a hit of acid and go home and, you know, fucking come tripping like by one. I'd be in, in, a junior in high school, a sophomore. But I knew that if I tripped by myself, that's when I got the full effect. And I would go home and take a fucking hit of window pane or four-way acid. And I'd get speakers. And I'd listen to like Black Sabbath, Sabotage or Master Reality, which just blows you out of the fucking water. And, I would, and at the end of the night, whatever problem I had, whatever inner problem I was thinking about that was really eating away at me, It'd be gone or solved. It would or be at least gone. soothed over, right? It was soothed over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least now I knew where I stood. Don't you think that's why so many problem kids, so many troubled kids have this deep, deep connection to music? 
You know, I mean, how many kids do you see that are just all fucked up and they got long, crazy, greasy hair, but they got a, a shirt on of their favorite band and they're headed to that concert and their fucking life depends on this show being good. You know what I mean? I mean, you're talking about like some really fucking dark and depressed people, but they love their music, man. Very funny. When we were in Philadelphia, a kid I had.